to the lesson. Um, I want to apologize. Last week, I did not get a chance to put a video on the um, YouTube that for this, this, this last week. And so I apologize for that. Some things come up. I, I first of all, I left my tablet in my big truck and I went to get back, gonna go back and get it. Never did. And then some other things come up. So I apologize. Maybe I can make up a video, a short video or something. But good morning. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. I want to give a message this morning. You know, we sometimes say, well, I, I said this first. I, I, I'm the first one that did this. Well, I want to bring a message entitled, here's the title, God said it first. God said it first. And, it, and it's actually settled. And we'll look at that verse from Psalms 119, verse 89, okay? Now, uh, we've been doing some memory verses also. We covered John 3, 16. We covered John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, John 14, 15. And then today, let's go ahead and, and uh, look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. First part of the verse, it says, Looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, okay? He's the author and finisher of our faith that we have in Christ at salvation. And he's going to finish that salvation. And that brings me to my next verse in just a minute. But let's, let's go over that again. Hebrews chapter 4, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, 2. Sorry about that. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Now, last time we did, when we give a video, I, we looked at a verse from Colossians. Now, on the video, it said uh, 4, 3, but actually it's Colossians 3, 4. I reversed the, um, the uh, chapter and verse there. It's Colossians 3, 4, and it says this. This is not the whole verse, but I want to, let's, let's learn the first part of this verse. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. It's, uh, you can look at the rest of it, but let's just memorize this first part of this verse. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is our our life shall appear. Isn't that wonderful? Someone says, well, what is your salvation? What is it, Christ? When Christ, who is our life, that's eternal life, shall appear. Okay? So Colossians 3, 4. Let's do that again one more time. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Colossians 3, 4. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the lesson this morning. I got my Bible right here turned op open to Psalms 119, and that's going to be verse number 89, okay? Verse number 89, and let's read this together, or if you don't have your Bible, you can just listen. It's Psalms 189, and it's verse 89. Forever, O Lord... Thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119 verse 89. That is a great verse because it tells us that the Bible, the word of God, God's word, was already settled in heaven before he ever created anything. That tells me that the Bible is already there, it's already proclaimed, it's already from everlasting to everlasting. That's God, and God is from everlasting to everlasting. His word is from everlasting to everlasting. 
So, Psalms 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You can believe it or you can not believe it. You can say, well, I don't believe that part. It's still true. Well, I don't know if this has happened or not. It's already happened. It's already settled. It's already, and everything that's coming to pass in the future is already settled. Now, we will clarify a verse about man's choice that God gave us, but that God overrules in the end. He rules in the end. We'll share that with you as we go down through here. So, number one, number one, if you're taking notes, if not, we're going to try to be as brief as possible on each one of these. They're not that long, and we're going to keep it around 30 minutes, Lord willing. All right, number one, number one, God is the first to claim that he is God. <laughs> that is obvious. Now, you say, well, where's that at? First book, first chapter, first verse. In the beginning, now in the beginning of what? Everything. <laughs> in the beginning, God, okay? In the beginning, God, and it's referring to creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? Now, we'll share something else of, from Job about that in just a little bit as we go down through here. But number one, that's just so simple. He's the first to claim that he is God. The word God is in the plural there. It means Elohim. It means plural. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all are three in one. Elohim, plural. In the beginning, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit created heaven and the earth. Okay? Simple. That is so simple. He's the first to proclaim. Okay? Number two. Let's move right on now. He's the first to proclaim, and this is the second part of Genesis 1-1, the creation, okay? The creation. I want to read to you. Let me go ahead and find it real quick. It's Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. When he gets through with creation there, he goes and he looks and he said, And God saw that everything he made, that's creation, and behold, it was very good, in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. This is the end. The next day, the seventh day, he would rest, okay? But God created the heavens and the earth. He created creation. It's all here. Now, I said I'd share something with you from Job. Now, we have in our, in our society evolution, we got everything you can imagine where this earth come from, how it came to be, where it came from. And we could, we could go in some details about that, but I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, that's not something that really is, 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 is on the contrary. What does God say? But let's go to Job. Let's go to Job. We're going to see something that God asked Job. Job was asked a question in uh, chapter 38, okay? This is near the end of the book, okay? Now, Job uh, went through all the sufferings. We know that. But uh, at the end, he asked Job a question because he was telling Job, I'm in control, Okay? And I don't think Job's looking back now in heaven and, uh, and, and wondering why God did what he done. He knows now why God did what he done, okay, with his sufferings and all I'm referring to. But Job 38, and let's just appeal to some of these people that say, I know where creation come from. It evolved in all this. Um, got a question for them. The same question that God asked Job. Job chapter 38 and verse 4. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? <laughs> can, can you answer that? Where was you? Was you, was you there watching in the, in the background? Did you have some binoculars looking at this creation as it was created? No, nobody was there. God said, I, I created it. I made it. No one can say, well, I know that's where it come from. I was there. 
And he goes on to say, he says, declare if thou hast understanding. Nobody understands that we understand by faith that the worlds were framed. And we see that in chapter uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We see that, okay? Hebrews chapter 12 too, I believe it is. But uh, verse 5, it says, Who have laid the, the, laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who have stretched the line upon it? In other words, who can declare? <laughs> Nobody was there. <laughs> Some people obviously think they were there. They, they weren't there. So God is first to proclaim that he's God, Elohim. He's the first to claim that he created everything, which he did. Okay, that, that's so simple. And then the next one, he's the first to proclaim eternal life. Okay, now that's what everyone wants, eternal life. We don't want to die physically on this earth, but we sure want to live forever after this life. He's the first one to proclaim it. Now, this would be in Genesis chapter 3. And you remember by this time, Adam and Eve both had ate of the fruit, tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. God called them out, judged them. But he gave Eve a promise. He said, there's going to be a seed to come from the woman. And, and that seed will crush the head of Satan. Okay? of Satan. So there's the first promise that he's going to destroy evil, okay? In John 8, 44, he says, you're of your father, the devil. He was a, he was a murderer from the beginning. This, this, all, God's going to destroy evil. He's going to destroy death, and we'll get to that later, a little bit later on. But there's another verse that maybe next week or the next couple of weeks we'll memorize. It's, it's this, Titus 1, 2. Listen to this verse. It says, in hope of eternal life. Now, that word hope is not like today our hope. Well, I hope it happens. No, this was a confidence. This is confidence in the King James Version of the Bible that we so love and so dearly. It means a confidence. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. He promised eternal life before the world began. You say, well, how, how can God do? He's God. <laughs> he knows the past. He knows the front. He knows the back. He knows the up, down. He's already, it's already settled. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's already settled. He already, he already knows what was going to happen. He already had the plan of eternal life in mind, and he already promised it. Listen to it again. Titus 1, 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world begun. He promised to anyone that would trust his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he would promise them eternal life, and they can have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have trusted Christ, and therefore, he says, you have eternal life. And, and a person can have eternal life. So, moving right along, he's the first one to proclaim or to control everything, okay? Now, we're going to have to balance this out because someone is going to say, well, wait a minute, why is there so much evil on the earth? Why is there so much going on that, that, that God's not the author of evil? No, he's not. Of course not. Of course not, he's not. Well, how do, how, do we, how do we balance this out? Let me try to do that with the scriptures, of course. Now, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9. First of all, let me say this. I don't understand the wisdom of God, the power of God, the understanding from the beginning to the end. But the scripture said that's why we are to live by faith, believing that God will do right, he will do right, and work it out to his plan. God's got a plan that we don't understand. It's far beyond our comprehension. But that's why the Bible says trust in the Lord. That's why the Bible says faith pleases God. Faith to come to Jesus Christ for salvation and faith to live a Christian life. God's got it all in control. He's got it all planned out. 
So listen to this verse, and we'll try to balance this out. Proverbs 16, verse 9. Proverbs 16, 9, it says this. A man's heart deviseth his way, or her way, okay? A man's heart, his or her heart, deviseth his way. That's our choice. Adam had a choice in the garden. Eve had a choice in the garden. We have choices in life every day to make a right decision, a wrong decision, to go to, go to God, to leave away from God, to, to serve him, to serve other gods. A man's heart, that's the heart, heart right here. In that heart, we devise it our way. But here's the second part of that verse. But God, but the Lord directed his steps or her steps. That is, you can make your choice, but God's going to give you just what choice you made. You go out here and you're, you're, you're swindling people. You're deceiving people. You're wanting their, their lust, your, their desires, their fame and all. You, you, you're just, you're going to get the same. And, and you think, well, I, I, I'm going to make it to heaven on my own. You, you're going to get your steps directed to hell. Because God said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You can make your choices. People's making their choices every day against God. Some making their choices for God. Some's leaning that way. Some's heading that way. That's why some's heading back away. God, some's already way back in their left field. God says, you make the choice, but you're, I'm going to direct your steps. There's the balance. We have a choice, but God's going to direct the steps. And he said, whatsoever you sow, if you're going to reap, whatever it is, you trust my son, you have eternal life. You don't trust my son, you don't have eternal life. You have eternal damnation of hell facing a person. That's, that's the truth. That's the direction. We have a choice. We must take those choices we must make those choices within the heart and carry out within the mind and the body to do what we want to do. But God said, I'm going to direct the steps. Do we understand all of that every time? No, we don't. But you can mark it down. It's going to, it's going to come out that way. So God is the one to proclaim that he's going to control everything. He is in control of everything. Why is it the devil put in hell right now? Why is it he already bound in hell? I don't understand that. Other than the fact that God says he's got a plan. He's going to carry that plan out. And he's going to destroy the devil. He's going to destroy evil. He's going to destroy death itself. And, and we'll come down to that. Now, just in side note, he's the first one that gave away the bride. Okay? He gave Eve to Adam. He's, he gave the marriage. He gave the marriage. Male and female. He gave the marriage. Okay? He gave the family. Male, female, and children. He gave the family. Okay? God's the first one that gave that. God's the first one that proclaimed that. Now, the God, we've already mentioned this in a, in a sense, he's the first one to give us a choice. He said, Adam, if thou eatest of the fruit... Okay, he gave us a choice. We're not robots walking around. If we was robots, we would have no relationship, no fellowship. Can you imagine walking around on this earth on this? Earth? No pets to pet, no no cuddling, no 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 loving, no children to love. Just robots walking around or zombies walking around. No, no. He said, I'm going to give you a choice. You have a choice. You can serve me. You can love me. You can come to my son, or you can come away from, from, from me. God gives us a choice. He's the first to say, I give you a choice in life. We do have a choice. Now, sometimes them circums the choices will, will uh, give us uh, some, if you will, some uh, persecution, if you will. If you go the right way, sometimes you might be persecuted. But, but we still have a choice. And you got to determine what you're going to do with that choice. He's the first to claim victory over death. You think about it for just a minute. What do we like? We like death. We, I mean, uh, life, not death. We like life. We don't want to pass away. We don't want to, now, we want to have quality of life and, and, and all of that. But we love death. Now, I want to turn to a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 
in the New Testament, of course. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 20. And it says this, But now is, is Christ risen. He's talking about from the dead, okay? But now is Christ risen from the dead, okay? And become the first fruits. He's the first one to come from the dead of them that sleep, okay? He's the first one. Someone says, well, wait a minute. I thought Lazarus, Lazarus was, was, was not dead in the sense. He revived him, okay? In the Old Testament, there were some that come back from the dead. He revived them. But Christ died. He was dead. He's the first one to come back from the grave. He's the first one. Put it to you another way, and I've shared this with you before, I believe, on, on different lessons. You take any religion, any of them, all the hundreds or how many ever there is in your region, in America, in the world, there's one thing that Christianity has. Christianity. We're not talking about denominations. We're not talking about um, ethnic groups or groups of people. We're talking about Christianity, Christ. He's the only one that's come from the grave. Everybody else is in the grave. Every religion, every denomination, every leader, if you will, they're all in the grave. Can a dead best dead person do you any good? No. <laughs> Only one that's alive can do you good. He conquered death, hell, and the grave, went to the cross of Calvary, was buried, rose again. He's alive, and he says, if you'll come to me, I'll save you. No one else has that. Who's going to save them in the end? Who's going to carry them to this place of paradise or wherever they think they're going? Who's going to do that for them? Their leader's dead. He's in the grave. Not Christ. He's the first one to claim that he come out of the grave. He is the first one to come out of the grave. Hallelujah. I have a Savior that's coming back. He didn't say, I'm going to die and stay there. He said, I'm going to come back and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, those that have Christ in here have trusted him. Not know about him up here, but to have trusted him. That's salvation. Let's move on. He's the first one to claim that he's going to destroy this earth. Heaven and earth is going to be destroyed. And he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Now, someone says, well, I thought man was going to destroy this earth. Don't we have bombs and things? I'm, I'm sure we do. Uh, we can wipe off the part of the map if we could. But that's not the earth. That's not the heaven and the earth. That's not the new heaven and new earth that Revelation 21 talks about. God's the first to claim he's going to destroy this earth. You say, how do we know that he's the first? He's, it's already settled. Psalms 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's already settled. New heaven and new earth coming, new Jerusalem coming, all of that. He's going to make it up back over like he intended to in the beginning. All diseases, all death, all sorrows, all tears, it's going to be wiped away. One day. He's the first one to claim that. And we get to know him through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We get to live with him eternally because Jesus paid the debt and you can receive him as your savior and be born again, have eternal life. And then we want to say, he's the first to proclaim that he would save a person if they come to his son. Jesus said himself, he said, all that the father giveth me shall come to me. And to him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. You remember Cain? Cain brought the wrong kind of offering in Genesis chapter 4. He brought what he could do with his hands, and God said, that's not acceptable. But if thou doest well, if you go, go and repent, turn back to me and bring a blood sacrifice pointing to my son that would pay the debt, pointing to me that I would pay the debt on the cross of Calvary in the future, uh, Cain, you, you will be accepted. You know, if you're not saved right now at this moment, you can be accepted if you'll come through and by Jesus Christ. And look up and, 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 and honestly look within your heart. You ever lied? You ever lusted? You ever had hatred in your heart the same as murder? Lust in your heart, the same as adultery. You're a sinner. You're lost. The wages of sin 
is death. Why does a person die? Because of sin. But if you'll come to Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I will give you eternal life. God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. A lot of people want to say, God, I'll make it up to you. I'll do this. God doesn't want to hear that. That's a slap in the face to God. That's a mockery to God that gave his son. But if you will say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. And I'm headed to a place called hell. The wages of sin is death. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14. Death and hell itself will be cast into the lake of fire. This is a second death. But if you will humble your heart and say, God, I choose to turn back to you. I believe you sent your son, the Lord Jesus. I can't undo what I've already done, God. But I say, God, I'm sorry. And I turn back to you through your son. I believe you sent your son, Jesus. And then at the same time, Jesus, I believe it's your God's son. I believe that you're God. You died on that cross and you was buried, and I believe that you're alive. I believe that. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come inside of me and save my soul from hell. Give me eternal life, for I believe. If you will humble your heart and repent to God and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be saved, for whosoever shall call. That's when the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with your heart calling you to Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Jesus said, I will in no wise cast out those that come to me by faith, trusting what I did on the cross of Calvary. Hope you've enjoyed this message. If you're not saved, take care of it. Take care of it now. Why the Holy Spirit of God, why God's calling while well, God's calling. Again, thank you very much. And until next lesson, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. All right. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye. Jesus is Lord.